All right, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I wanted to talk about something. It's kind of been on the periphery. I've been kind of going through lots of videos as you see on my YouTube page right here, just on a search on can I retire? And uh, a lot of people say, oh my God, I have to wait to 65 and all this stuff or 67. Nobody knows, right? And uh, even if you're in your 20s and 30s, you have to think about this, how to become financially independent. First of all, let me define my, uh, my definition of retirement is basically getting out of your crappy old job. Some people call it COJ. Getting out of that crappy old job where you're, gonna, you're doing the grind every morning. It's like the American dream. You get to wake up every morning and repeat it. You drive on the highway. You drive into an office. You're halfway, you're half asleep. You're dealing with toxic people. You're working for the man. You're not working for yourself. And also with the COJ, the cop, uh, crappy old job. The other acronym is J-O-B. It's a job just over broke. So the goal is to get out of that. Go work for yourself. Go do what you want to do. Retirement doesn't mean the old days where you're do your 30 years in at IBM go home, sit on the couch and do nothing. You'll drive your wife crazy and you will pretty much pass away in two years because you lost your purpose. You lost your purpose in life. And this is a study, look it up, the IBM two-year curse. A lot of guys would retire after 30 years of working anywhere. They go retire, do your little hobbies so much, you're gonna lose your mind. And then they call it the IBM two where you drop dead after two years. Because for men, men are driven to have purpose to wake up and want to build stuff, do stuff, solve problems. Most men, most normal men. The other ones, eh, well, you don't want to be near them. So my definition of retirement is stop working for toxic people in a job you hate where you will have the golden handcuffs or you just can't take it anymore. Your mind and your gut will tell you when to get out. Eat clean. Don't eat all this processed fast food crap that's going to kill you. And listen to your gut, because then it will actually work better with all that, that, all that sugar and poison in it from fast food places. Listen to your gut, and you'll know. For me, it was tough. I worked in one field as a contractor, several different areas, engineering. A lot of nerds, a lot of boss babes started to pop up. Toxic boss babes. This is before all the Me Too crap and all that. But uh, when you get a boss babe that has something to prove, oh my God. It was a toxic, hostile, hostile work environment. And there was believe all women. It was such crap. So I just said, I'm out. I went home and I started to work remote before it was cool, double quotes, cool to be remote. I worked on stuff, on tech stuff remotely, and I did fine for a few years. Then I still realized, even though I'm out of the office, I'm away from all the toxicity, all the childishness, I cannot concentrate. You have idiots walking behind you, disrupting you. And I'm there to work. I'm not there to be your freaking friend. I'm not there to be part of the company family or everyone's big buddies. Because you know what? Once they lay you off, they're not going to come pay your mortgage. They're not going to forget. They're, they're not going to send you Christmas cards. They're going to forget they even know you because it's all a freaking lie. The company culture BS is all BS. It's, it's just stupid. It's just an egomaniac's way of controlling people. I have people working for me. Yeah, I have people working for me and they all worship me. I am David Koresh of the tech world. All that crap. So yeah, I got out of that. Did that for a few years. Got, got away from all that toxicity, all those, all those mental midgets working in the field of engineering. Worked from home and then I quickly realized... I didn't even want to do this anymore. I didn't want to do tech anymore. If I looked at another line of code, I would just, you know, pretty much self-abort. <laughs> it was just horrible. So I was about, let's see, uh, 56. And I said, screw it. I'm not doing this anymore. I had enough in savings from working in the high-tech field. And I just said, I'm just going to fart around. I had the wife working too. She was, she was covering the health insurance, which was good because that's expensive as hell. If you uh, lose your job or you quit, Cobra will break your bank. Cobra is a ripoff. So you got to plan for that. That's the biggest expense. Or you can go without health insurance. Some people do it. It is a big ripoff. This country, America. I mean, I hate to say it. George Carlin said it best. Uh, it's an American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. It's horrible right now. A horrible place to live and work in America, what it, what it, what it has become. So anyway, I'm looking at, well, 
what do I do? So I went out and I reinvented myself. That's the secret to retirement is going and keeping yourself purpose, a daily purpose, waking up, <clears throat> finding stuff to do, helping others out, doing that type of stuff, not just sitting in front of Netflix. Because again, you have two years and you're, you're gone if you do that. If you have no purpose or nothing to wake up to, it's over for you. Yeah, so you got to just think of how to reinvent yourself. And that's basically what retirement is, is not just stopping work. It's basically stopping your crappy old job. Then the problems you have to encounter of, do I want Social Security? Am I too young to do Social Security? How am I going to survive? Basically, go get a job or make a job that you want to do. It's easy. You know, fun, maybe not lucrative, but just fun and go out and kills a couple days and you're providing purpose. You don't have the headache of running the business, the stress of insurance, uh, taxes, uh, getting clients, stuff like that. You just show up, do your job, make a couple bucks, and you go home. And there's your day. You need to do a couple days a week, and there's your purpose. So that's what I advise. And that's kind of what I did. I fell into something else where I'm no longer sitting in front of a toxic computer screen dealing with toxic uh, government contractors and government employees. Oh, my God. Talk about a wasted life. Uh, working in for the government as a contractor oh, and even contractor companies. I don't know what it is. I think it's every place. It's just working with humans. Humans, it's just horrible. I couldn't wait to get out. It was just toxic. Uh, again, the boss babies really ruined it. You get one woman in an office of like 100 men. It was just, come on. This doesn't work that way. We're not, it, does, it didn't work. I'm, I'm going from experience. It was just not a good environment. Cut that out of my life. Cut the stress out. Cut to commuting out, work from home. Uh, again, I had a network of people. I got offers from work to work I worked with in the past. I realized even I'm working from home, I'm still inside and I'm doing crap I hate. I hate, I hate engineering. Fast forward, I'm now looking at these videos. I'm on YouTube. There's a plethora of retirement videos. When you're going through this, as you get closer to planning, the crappy old job I crapped up. The physical crappy old job was a lot longer. It was like eight years ago. And then since then, I did a couple of the remote jobs. And then I said, enough is enough. And now I'm outdoors doing work uh, on, the, on, the, on the water every day. It's kind of fun. So that is not my business. So I go do the work and I come home and you make a couple extra bucks and it keeps you busy and it gives you purpose. So now you start watching these videos pop up. How do you retire? What do you need to retire? You hear people like this Dave Ramsey clown. You need 8%. To pull 8% a year from your investments to be able to live. Pay off your house. Susie Orman goes, you need $6 million to retire. It's enough to drive you mad. Uh, so I'm going through all this stuff. Some are good, some are bad. Basically, my advice is go through everything. It's like throwing crap on the wall. Some of this, some, There's some good points that stick. But if you're even any age I'm talking about, you want to retire at 30, 40. There are calculations out there. First, go to your social security thing. Find out what your payments will be at every age, for FRA uh, for retirement age versus early retirement 62. I don't recommend and 70. And the reason I don't recommend it, because again, for me, it doesn't make sense to take it early because you have a spousal benefit. If I take it early, that cuts my spousal benefit. If I, if I croak, then she doesn't get as much. So if I wait to uh, full retirement age 67, boom, I get a lot more money a month and then her survivor benefit is a lot more as well. So, and if you don't need to take it, just hold off. It, it's basically treating social security as insurance as you get older. Not, it is income, but it gets, it goes up the longer you wait. I think, is it 8%? I'm not sure. But again, watching these videos will drive you nuts. I think they're playing the algorithm. They're going, can I retire at 50 if I have $400,000 and a 401k? Can I retire at 1 million? This one guy puts out every different dollar amount. 1.5 million, if I have 1.5 million and I'm 60, can I retire? If I have 500,000 at 48, can I retire? It just drives you nuts. And then one guy is saying, take it at 62. If you're 62, take your social security as soon as possible because it's your money and it may not be there. But it's not that easy. It's just not that easy. So let's scroll down here. Here's this guy, how much do I need to retire? Think twice before listening to Fidelity. Well, yeah, think twice before listening to anybody on YouTube as well. Uh, why disagree with Fidelity? Think twice when planning for retirement. Uh, here's, all, here's my boy, this guy, this cult leader, Dave Ramsey. How do I know when I have enough money to retire? It just will drive you mad. Two million saved. Can I retire and live off interest? Oh my God. All these things will drive you nuts. Here's my retirement budget. 
Uh, six, re six reasons to retire as soon as you can. Stop wasting time. Well, let's hit some of these. Well, yeah, stop wasting time. You're not the same person. If you're 55, you're not going to be the same person at 65. Your, your health does go down. I'm sorry. Even if you work out, you're going to be more tired. You're not going to want to go do as much. You become an old curmudgeon mostly. You, you know, you're not going to be able to, your knees are going to be given out. You're not going to want to be doing more physical stuff or travel and stuff like that. Uh, you start you start declining after 65, 70. From 55 to 65, yeah, well, you, you, you feel it. From uh, 65 to 70, you feel it some more. And then onward, if you, if you keep making, if you keep living that long, you start to degrading. If you don't like what you've done and you've done well, but you haven't saved, you're kind of boned. You really got to save money. You got to cut out your expenses. So stop buying shiny objects. Stop wasting stuff on subscriptions. Uh, these are the core values I learned is invest, uh, get dividends. Hopefully you can live off the dividends. But if you haven't started, I mean, you need, a, you need to be in the market a long time to build up that wealth. And a lot of these guys saying, here, do this, do that. I don't know, man. You got to look at your own mental health and uh, you got to worry about your physical health too. keep that in check too. make sure you're eating right. Quit eating fast food and crap. Yeah. And go for a walk now and then get outside and get some vitamin D and stop watching cable news. Don't watch. Don't be on TikTok. Do not be on Twitter. Because what you put in your brain, it actually messes with you. It makes you, makes you, just makes you sick. So if you watch Twitter and see all the vile stuff on Twitter from both sides of the aisle politically and all the crap they put out there. Uh, if you watch news networks, oh my God, turn it off. Cut it off. Just don't watch, even YouTube, just, you can block the news channel. Block all news. Uh, block all this stuff from your feeds. I used to have a backdrop on my browser pop up with the latest news of the day. I didn't care. What am I going to do about it? Oh, there's a war here. There's a war there. Well, big, big F and do. What am I going to do about it? I'm going to, you know, I look out my window. It's sunny and the birds are chirping and I'm going to go out in the water today. There, that's all I care about. You can only control basically what you think for that day and how you're going to act. You're not going to solve any of these news problems. And why, why put it in your brain and have it basically mess with your attitude? Oh, here's a retirement budget. So having said all this, what have I picked up from some of these videos? Average retirement savings at age 60, they kind of depress you. If you don't have 1 million by 60, you're going to be working to your drop, you know, retirement with 500,000. 500, so they give you this one too, retire with 500,000, how it works. And here are the examples. Uh, it's just more stuff. Do not retire if. It's just all these catchy clickbait things. Five reasons why you should not retire. Oh my God. Save your retirement. <laughs> Prove three steps. Now we're forever. Now we're never. Oh, I can I retire at 55 with two million? Oh my God, dude, this is enough to drive you to drink. Enough. Get your numbers. You got these young dudes too. So here's the two, the three, the three scariest letters next to the IRS are CFP, Certified Financial Planner. Oh my God, dude, be careful with these guys. They are gonna try to sell you stuff, and they're gonna look at you and say, "Ooh, I can make lots of money through expenses and fees off this clown who wants to retire at 62." So I'm gonna sell him some insurance, some annuities, and I'm gonna make commissions off him. And uh, he's gonna flatline in his investments for f as many years as he's with me, and I'll charge him lots of money too. If I'm a CFP, I could charge him up to ten thousand a year to do stuff that he should know how to do already by simple research. Yeah, watch out for these CFPs. And there's also CRFPs, Certified Retirement Financial Planners. These guys are just specialized in retirement. I don't know, man. I don't trust them as far as I can throw them. I had a bad experience with an Ameriprise one. The guy, they just got me in expenses and fees. And for four years, I was making no money. They were making the money. I wasn't making the money. And they sold me retirement insurance. I kind of trusted the dude to steer me right. But I just said, no, man, this is stupid. I can do this myself. Yeah, so I'm heavily in the drips index funds and cash right now so social security 62 here's another one here's how much you need to retire retire asap before it's too late look at all these titles my seven biggest retirement six regrets of 2023 dun, dun, dun. oh my god retire at 55 stop working early i mean you here's my thing if you really hate your job you better have socked some cash away and uh, you're getting five percent now on money markets. So if you have a hundred thousand bucks at five percent, yeah, you're gonna do. All, you know, you're gonna have some extra cash coming in each month. If you have a mortgage, if your house is too big, freaking downsize it. Housing values are so high right now. You should be able to make money off your house. Go rent for a while. Wait till the uh, housing market crashes, which it's probably gonna do soon, and then buy a house with cash if you can. And have no debt. 
Ramsey says, I have no debt. It's impossible. I mean, I have a mortgage. That's it. I don't have cars, credit card debt or anything. I pay everything off. I pay with cash. If I can't afford it, I don't buy it, you know, with cash. Uh, yeah, the house, I'm going to eventually, I think the goal is to sell it, downsize to something, take the profits, and hopefully pay as much cash as possible, if not all, on the next house, or just rent. Because even owning a house now with property tax and insurance, say you get in and you have a $3,000 a month mortgage, right? You're thinking, oh my God, I can't raise, they can't ever raise my rent because I own it, I own a house, and I got a $3,000 mortgage. Well, then you find out, oh my God, your property tax has gone up, your insurance has gone up, and these are held in escrow on your mortgage. So guess what? Every year in February, the mortgage offices go through, they do a reassessment of your escrow, and then they will up your mortgage accordingly. So there goes, your, there goes the lie about your mortgage can't be increased if you're locked in a 30-year whatever fixed, right? Bullshit. It's going to go up because of your escrow and your prop, yeah, property tax and insurance. It's scary. People are going to be... People are paying three thousand a month, which is cheap for a mortgage. They're going to probably end up finding they're paying thirty six hundred. And if you're an HOA, holy crap! Watch out for special assessments. They just throw out there, which become daily assessments. And watch out for the yearly HOA fee to go up as well. Everything is going up. This country is imploding. It's uh, failing. The West, you know, U.S. is just going down fast. So I don't know. What do you do? What are some of the takeaways I got from some of these videos? Is uh, the buckets look up three buckets if you're interested in all this retirement talk uh, don't wait till it's too late just get an idea about it so you can start planning have three buckets the first four years are covered with cash or something very conservative bonds money market five percent whatever stuff that you can ride out any downturns in the stock market the next bucket will be five to I don't know five to ten years out and that's a little less a little, little more in the stocks you don't need it right away and mix of bonds, whatever. And then the third bucket is more aggressive stocks, 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 maybe um, uh, further year, further down the road. The bucket, you don't need to pull on that money. So if the market goes down for a couple of years, three or four years, five years, you're covered. You don't need to touch that bucket. You got your first bucket full of cash. You're going to ride it out in bonds and you can withdraw it and use it and pay your bills. Second thing is if you have Roth or an IRA, <clears throat> there are tax strategies to convert your IRAs. If you had a 401k, you quit a job or left your crappy old job, you rolled it into a IRA, you can then start thinking, hmm, I'm over this certain age, was 59 and a half, I think, where you don't get penalized, the 10%, whatever that crap is, is you can start doing things called Roth, IRA to Roth conversion, IRA Roth conversions, where you basically start pulling out your IRA money and converting it to a Roth, and then that is treated as income and you got to do it according to your tax bracket you're at. So your um, AGI, your trust, adjusted gross income, and uh, you want to stay below your certain tax brackets, say you're 22% or even 12%. And remember, the tax brackets are going to go up 2025 because the, uh, you know, Trump did a great thing for everybody. He lowered the tax bracket. I mean, he made the tax brackets lower, and now they're going to expire, and they're going to go back up to higher. So you're going to pay more taxes, you know, once they expire. Good times are coming, folks. They want you working until you drop. Once you stop working and paying taxes like that or whatever, you're useless to the regime. So yeah, you've got to think about that too. So yeah, IRA to Roth conversions is another tactic uh, you can look at. And also, how do you fill the gap years if you're not working? Like you said, you have enough savings. Well, you're below the certain age. I can't really pull out money from IRA because I get pen uh, penalized. Well, my thing is go do your own thing. Start getting a side hustle like I do. I make a, uh, let's see, a quarter of what I used to make. But it's something, it covers the mortgage. It covers the mortgage. And I do have the wife making money, which covers the rest of the uh, incidentals in the house, food and stuff like that. So we're pretty much balanced. We're not really adding much to our savings, but the, you know, I do contribute my maximum to my Roth account each year because I have income. So I just put as much in, I'm just socking it away. Boom, boom, boom. Just maxing that puppy out. Because Roth, man, you're not gonna be paying tax on that. You know, there's no RMDs required minimal, minimal distributions or anything like that. So you have to then think, the, the bucket system makes work. The first thing I, I mentioned, the bucket system, three buckets, you know, cash you need in the next few years, right away up to the next few years, you, don't, you, you wanna have it safe, conservative. Second one is a little mix of stocks and bonds, a little more risk, and then the third one is, you know, just put me in, baby. 
you know, large cap growth. Make me some money because I'm not going to touch you for a long time. So you have that still growing out there. But now you're thinking, well, you know, I got Social Security. I might have a pension. <laughs> but pensions are really like 65, right? That's cool. That helps a lot. <clears throat> but how do you fill the gap years until you get there? And uh, do you want to take Social Security at 62? I don't think so. I don't know. Personally, I'm not. But look into it for your situation. If you need the income, then you take it, I guess. I don't know. Again, the whole point of when you see all this stuff. I don't know why I have RV life. All this stuff out here. You've got to realize in your brain, watch them, consume them. They're entertainment. Like this video is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not giving financial advice. I am not a certified financial planner like some of these clowns on here. Again, they're out to take money out of your wallet and put it in their wallet. So remember that. There is nothing on here you cannot learn yourself. Social Security site has all the information too on tax tables and stuff. Uh, you can have uh, download TurboTax. That actually helps. There is actually a what if part of the uh, spreadsheets. What if I made this? What if I made that? Does it put me in a higher tax bracket? What if I got this deduction? What if I had more dividends? What if I blah, blah, blah. You can do all the scenarios. And I know it's discipline. You got to sit your big butt down and you got to do it. And you'd rather pay a CFP 10,000 bucks to do it or just do it yourself over a couple weeks. Man, come on. Don't pay somebody something that you can do yourself. Dear God, unless you really are not good at understanding anything, then I, I can't help you. <laughs> You're on your own. Public school failed you. <clears throat> and they don't teach this stuff in public school. That's another crime. All right. So one thing, you know, this guy goes through, he, this guy, he retired at 52 too. He goes through his thing. And remember, everyone has a stick. They're, they're trying to push a stick. They're pushing an agenda. Uh, we got the buckets. We got possible Roth IRA conversions. How do you fill the um, gap years? Do you start pulling down? And, you know, if you say, you say, well, you know, I want to keep Social Security until FRA, full retirement age. And then, okay, well, then how do I cover seven years or eight years without that? Well, you can have a part-time job. I know you're not fully retired then, but my point earlier, full, full retirement, do you want to just sit around and do nothing all day? I mean, that gets old real quick. Sitting on a beach is no fun either for men. Men want to have purpose. Uh, traveling gets old real quick. Driving on a highway with an RV, that doesn't really sound appealing to me one bit. <clears throat> Maybe going once a year someplace or hopping on a cruise. Maybe that would be fun. But yeah, you got to think about that. Have purpose. Maybe you can start your own side hustle. That doesn't cost lots of money uh, to get, you know, ramp up speed. Don't do handyman work, stuff like that. Get your name out there. As long as you're competent at it. If you're, if you're not competent at it, don't do that. You know, make sure you're kind of decent. You're not going to go out there and rip people off by providing a service. Uh, yeah, what I do is fun. I just go out. I'm on the water <clears throat> half a day. And I come back with some, uh, some extra cash to pay the mortgage. Uh, it's not much, but it helps. Uh, what else? We got that. We got the Roth IRA conversion. The gap years. How do you fill the gap years? Uh, you reinvent yourself. Like I said, go, do, go get another job you enjoy doing. Again, it doesn't have to be 40 hours a week where they need you and they're going to call you in on the weekends. It's something you do like, uh, let's see, I do say three, 15 hours a week. If that, you find out what you want to do. Uh, read it, the, the secret sauce. Barring the money is reinventing yourself. And that's the hard part. That's the uh, million dollar question. What do I want to do now? Well, your whole career, you were an accountant in a windowless office dealing with toxic people that didn't bathe. Now, well, now you're out. What do you want to do? You can go outside. You can uh, be a tour guide. You can um, go get a license and drive a train around, tourist train around or something and have fun with it. You know, you can do stuff like that. Uh, one thing I did find on these videos too, which was helpful, that actually did stick with me, it wasn't all BS, is uh, New Retirement. There's an uh, application called New, I'm not selling anything, I'm not affiliated with them, I actually only did the two week trial. But I may actually buy it because they sent me a discount from 120 bucks to 90 bucks, I think. But basically it's a great tool, it's almost what the CFPs use. You put in all your information. I don't tie it to my accounts yet because I haven't paid for it. But basically, you hook in your accounts. If you want to, I don't. I would do it manually because I don't want any software talking to my bank accounts or anything like that. No, no, no. Not with, the, uh, not with all the freaking cyber attacks going on. Man, we are under attack with cyber attacks lately. So you got to watch everything. Watch that. Be careful. Be mindful of everything you do online. 
get a VPN, get a VPN ASAP. That'll protect all your network traffic from uh, people sniffing the network, trying to get your passwords, your accounts, your address issues used, all that stuff. Get a VPN. <clears throat> but you have your new retirement gives you all the planning stuff. You put in, you know, you're married, what you currently make, your investment values. If you have a mortgage, uh, do you want to do Roth IRA conversions? They give you calculations on that. Uh, when is the best to do it? What tax bracket you want to be below to do a Roth IRA conversion? And also, does it really help your situation if you do a Roth IRA conversion or not? It gives you all that information as well. So it may not be the best thing to do for your situation. Also, you can put in your Social Security, what you'll get at each age and when you think you'll take it or when you want to take it. And it'll give you the graphs and that when it'll show you the optimal time to take it. Uh, it removes all emotion from the equation and it gives you all the scenarios. It gives you the probability of your success rate, you know, how long you'll have money till. And most times if you do it right, once you start taking your social security and if you have a pension, your withdrawal from your investments drops, right? And as you get older too, you slow down folks. I'm sorry, I hate to tell you, you slow down, you start spending less, you start buying less things. And then uh, your investments kind of go back up. So if you're thinking about leaving money for your, your bratty kids, which, eh, I figure they go make their own money. I want to go to zero. <laughs> and I don't want to leave it to some charity. that are, you know, Charities usually just spend it on their admin and they pay their upper people lots of money. Like all, the, uh, all these celebrities have these charities. And if you look at it, the small print goes, you can see what they're making. The, uh, the people running the charities make 500,000 bucks. How do you think they're making that money? They're making it off your donations. It's a crime. It's a, no, it's, just, it's a grift. I'm not giving anybody any of my money. Let's say I know them and they need help. Yeah, I learned that long ago when I was in my 20s. United Way would always come, they always, companies would always force you to contribute to United Way and you never knew where it was gonna go. You kind of guess it would go to the dancing drummers of the Zimbabwe coast. It's like, I don't want it to go there. I want it to go to the American Cancer Society. No, it must go to the African drummers of Zimbabwe. It's like, no, it was such a, such a scam. Anyway, yeah, United Way, I don't know if they're still around. All right, what else did I get? So New Retirement, go check them out, newretirement.com. Try their two-week thing, see if it makes any sense to you. It made me feel more confident in that I did not have to pick up a phone and call a CFP. I did call one and I was going to set up an appointment. And then we we're going to, I just back after that, I just said, nah, I knew they're going to charge 10,000 bucks a year. I just cannot stomach giving these people 10,000 bucks a year. I almost would rather fail on my own than give any financial advisor money or talk to them on a the phone. I just can't do it. Not with all the information that's out there uh, through applications and internet. Again, there's a lot of garbage out here. Look, look at all this crap. You got to filter through it. Not knocking any of these guys personally, but some of these guys push one size fits all and it does not. It's what I came to realize is retirement as you get closer over the, say the 59 and a half mark, looking at the numbers, it becomes almost a tax problem to solve. You got to watch your taxes. That is going to be your biggest expense in retirement. And uh, I think the RMDs, the required minimal distributions, I think it's going up to 75 versus 72. So that's a good thing, I guess. But if you don't convert your IRA to Ross, your IRA is going to have all this money out there. You got to start taking RMDs and that's going to be treated as income and you tack that on top of your Social Security income. And yeah, you're going to pay tax on that. But if you do the uh, Roth IRA conversions, if, if, if it suits your situation, then you will pretty much minimize that tax liability where you're paying the tax up front while you're not even taking Social Security or your pension yet. You get it. You're going to take 100000 bucks. Uh, you're going to pay your 12%. I think on that because it's your income, it's treated as income. And it, new retirement will tell you, well, I want to take this much out. I want to stay below the 22%. I want to stay below the 12% tax break. And it'll tell you, well, here's what you can take out based on your current AGI, your adjusted gross income for you and your wife or you by yourself or whatever. Uh, it, it does all that for you. It's kind of a nice little tool. And I had a question on, does it show you the benefits of or the pros and cons of uh, holding a mortgage? while you're retired and they actually responded on a Saturday night and they sent me links to their uh, different use cases or scenarios. If you had a mortgage, 
Here's how it affects it. Ideally, you don't want any debt, right? But I have a three percent. I have a two point eight percent mortgage right now. So for me to take good money that's making fifteen twenty percent right now and dump it into pay off a three percent, no, that's stupid. That's not wise use of money when that money's out there growing. It's more risk, right? But hey, I'm willing to take that risk. The plan for me, like I said, is downsize the house, sell it, boom, take the money, maybe rent for a little bit, and then wait till the market crashes, the housing market, and then go buy a house with cash. You know, I don't know. That's the goal. It changes every day. So that's the other thing about retirement. It does change. It's a living document. Your plans are living. You, you have to pivot when you have to pivot, cut expenses when you have to, live within your means, and uh, just know how to work the tax thing too. Just understand how the taxes work. And that's where the applications like you know, TurboTax, new retirement come into play. Uh, there's some online sources. People are always going to try to sell your crap. That's what I'm trying to tell you too. These guys are good. You may want to reach out, but they're going to ask you. You know, they're they're going to ask you to sign up with them, write up an estimate for you, ten thousand a year, whatever it costs. And here's my fee, blah blah blah. And here's this clown. You need this much to retire. Oh man, stop it, dude. I hate when they put the fake, the phony, emotional. I know it's clickbaity. Then just show that like this dude. He's cool. I watched his videos. He just talks straight straight crap. I think he retired with 500,000 bucks. Yeah, retire by, f retire early 500K. And he doesn't have stupid little, oh my God, this guy's falling face and a little funny face here. You know, this, that's where you kind of can separate the wheat from the chaff, right? You can see the real video without all the clickbaity, uh, what do you call thumbnails and uh, text and stuff. Oh, stop working early. It's not about working. It's about getting out of your crappy old job. That's sucking the soul out of your life. During your um, go years, when you're healthy, when you want to do stuff. I mean, like I said, you 55, 65 years, you're still kicking. You get a little over closer to 70, you're going to start slowing down. If you haven't dropped dead by something already, I mean, that's the thing. Nobody knows how they're going to live. And all these uh, actuaries and planners will tell you, well, I can tell you exactly what to do. You just got to tell me when you're going to pass away. I went, oh, that's stupid. So they're all going by actuary tables and there are some sites based on your family history and your age when they, when, when they pretty much determine you're going to not be here anymore. Uh, it's kind of doom and gloom, but eh, if you want to know, you want to know, right? Here's retirement regrets. This guy, the experts, how much do you need to retire? What the experts say? Oh, these are all clowns. Susie Orman says five, 5 million. Oh, Ramsey, he's a cult leader. He's, he just yells at people. He's just, he's lost his mind, I think. Kramer's a clown, CNBC clown. If there is a thing out there, um, the inverse Kramer index, it shows how you would have performed if you did the exact opposite of all of Kramer's recommendation and you'd be up really big. You'd be, you'd be really successful. His advice is crap. He's saying Bitcoin sucks. Bitcoin's at 44,000 bucks from 26,000. What a, what a doofus. You gotta be careful with these guys. Again, treat it as entertainment to get a chuckle. But do, what is it, doubt but verify. If they tell you something, doubt it. Just doubt it right at the top. You'll be ahead of the game. And then go verify. Oh, well, he actually said it was true. But odds are 99.9% nine, nine, of these guys are all just shilling crap and grifting. Uh, I don't think she understands how anybody cannot make $10 million a year. That's where her brain is at. She's one of the elitist. It looks like she's turning into a man, too. It's weird. Oh, well. The 4% rule is dead wrong. Oh, God. There's that 4% rule, too, where you can basically draw down your investments by 4% each year, and, and it'll stay the same. I, it just drives you nuts, man. It just drives you nuts. Look at this guy. Retired early, 1.3 million. Expert reacts to CNBC. I'm 60 years old with 800K in savings. Can I retire? Right now? Oh, dear God. See these titles? I think they're working the algorithm. He's got 80K views on it. Yeah, he's got 80K views on it. It's just, it's just insane. Uh, how to calculate when you can retire. Jeez. Problem with these calculators, they don't take in your portfolio growth. You know, they're taking averages, which is fine, but they're not taking in, hey, I'm going to make 20% off this growth stock, or I'm going to make 5% off this money market. Uh, it's just too many variables. So, your retirement is unique to you. There is not one size fits all. You need to know all the information, taxes, uh, when you can draw, what is your social security at different ages. Uh, FRA is there for a reason, full retirement age. Some people wait till 70. It all depends. Are you married? Uh, do you have a house? What kind of bills do you have? All this stuff is unique to you. How are you going to cover medical? 
Uh, if you take it, if you're off at 55 and you're going to do something else, you got to think about all this stuff. If you watch these videos, it doesn't most, it is not for you. It just gives you little pieces that you can digest and go, Oh yeah. Like I got the bucket system out of it. The three buckets. I got the new retirement app, which helped me a lot, which I, I'm told you I'm going to probably buy next month. Uh, like this guy, the young guys, there's a couple of young guys, one guy, young guy, that's really good. Some guys you get, you can go with your spidey sense. If your spidey sense is tingling, just stop watching the video and pick, you know, keep, keep browsing for something else. Oh, uh, then they go through some real world stuff. You get some real guys on here that actually have retired and they just start posting what, what they're going through. And they do say you spend less. And then they, the biggest thing they always say, I should have done this earlier. Uh, there is Obamacare, whether you like the guy or not, there's an ACA affordable care act. You can check that out if you need to cover yourself medically. Uh, there's that 4% rule. See, there's the ACA. At the end, people say, uh, how am I going to cover myself medically with medical insurance, right? Look at the ACA. You don't need, don't do Cobra. You'll go broke. You'll be in the poorhouse. Cobra is ridiculous. It's a ripoff. It's overpriced. I'll check the AC out. You might qualify. Uh, use the government. The government in general, they're run by Nick and Poops. Uh, and through their ignorance, they cause a lot of bad things to happen. But there are some good things. Very, very few. But there are some good things. Like the, the Social Security site sets all up. They have the ACA, which could help you out. Uh, so there are small sets of good things. But in general, government's bad. Uh, let's see. Early retirement. What you need to know, uh, FIRE, which is uh, Financial Independence, Retire Early. Uh, the, go, you can go through these if you're bored. But when I play the videos, what I do, I put them on 1.5 speed because I don't have all day to sit through a 15-minute video to talk about, I save, 450, 15, I save 450K. How much retirement income will it generate? For 15 minutes, <clears throat> just tell me. I'm sick of uh, sitting through your video. So 1.5 speed is my pro tip for the day. Uh, what else we got? I'm trying to think what else. In all of these videos, like I said, there's no one solution for all. The Ramsey, whatever these people you follow or worship, don't listen. I mean, there's not one size fits all. You need to sit down, learn everything you need to know. Taxes, taxes, taxes is king. Uh, health insurance, if you want it, is king. And there's ACA there. Uh, do you want to convert from IRA to Roth? Do you have a pension? Uh, do you draw down your uh, IRA money while you're waiting, deferring your Social Security until full retirement age? Do you hold on to a mortgage? Or do you dump the house? Because it's just a freaking house. It's Houses are expensive. Maintaining, insurance, taxes. Dump it, downsize. Live in a cheaper area. Because if you live in a cheaper area, you'll save more and you'll have more to go travel if you're in an expensive area you're all your money what is it mortgage poor you're not gonna be able to do anything except wither away waiting for them to smell your dead corpse and haul you out <laughs> the reality of the situation is there you don't need to stay where you're at if you don't want to there are cheaper alternatives or they're not cheaper but there are alternatives if you want to act on them but most people are lazy they won't most people that need this advice not it's not advice most people that need advice don't watch YouTube to get advice. You see what I mean? You, you everyone watching these videos is kind of here to pick it up and say, "Hey, I'm worried about this. What what are all these videos? Like this guy here, this clown Ramsey. Oh my God! When's the best time to start collecting Social Security? He, I think he, his thing is uh, collect it as ASAP and then invest it. I'm just like, uh, it doesn't fit everybody, dude. Everyone's different, so you cannot just come out and say that. But he needs clicks. He needs likes. He needs to have those views to pay for his, uh, his lifestyle. So, uh, retired. Here's the only funds you need. Look at all this stuff. More than you think. Six. Oh my God. Do you have enough? Do you see, you see what I'm getting at? You can retire overseas. Now I hit, now I hear people are talking about Philippines move there, which is cheap, uh, Panama, which Panama looks pretty damn nice. I'll be honest. If you want to go make your dollar stretch longer, there's no need to stay in America. Because we are collapsing. Western civilization is collapsing. Whether it's through the Chinese communists using TikTok or social engineering our culture into a tailspin, uh, you just don't know. Because if you look at TikTok in China, all they push is STEM, science, technology, engineering, math. In America, it's all stupid stuff, stupid human things, which are just poisoning your mind, you know. 
uh, uh, cross-dressing parades and dancing in front of kids with your umbrellas. I, it's what? It's just stupid. So you can see something's going on there. And TikTok is owned by a Chinese company. So you do the math. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Anyway, that's all I wanted to put out this video. It's just been heavy on my mind. Watching all these videos. Uh, one guy pushes getting getting a retirement 62 ASAP, collect it, file two months early because it takes two months to get the paperwork done and you get your first check. But he lives as a minimalist. He lives in an RV down by the river. He goes to Walmart. He goes to Target and Costco every day. And uh, it's all right by him. That's his lifestyle. But some people don't want to live that lifestyle as a minimalist. Uh, yeah. And he's not married. So he doesn't worry about spousal benefits. So there's, again, my point is not every one of these videos suits you. You need to just... Watch them for entertainment, get the facts, and then lay it, write them all down. Just start collecting information as you watch and gather your information from different applications, like I mentioned, government sites. Just start making a, a, a sp uh, not a spreadsheet or a, um, just a document with all the stuff you need to think about. And then start learning yourself. Uh, critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, you do have them. And it actually, actually uh, strengthen your brain too because you're using it. And uh, no one cares. Let me, how do I say this? Let's, let's wrap this up. No one cares more about your money than you. Why pay someone else to tell you stuff that you may not agree with or follow uh, 10,000 bucks a year just to tell them what you can do yourself? Yeah. And then other thing, build your network. You have, you have to have friends and family. Maybe not family so much. Friends, you can say, here's what I'm thinking to do. What are you doing? And open it up. Get a little network group going. Uh, multiple logs burn brighter together and you'll learn from each other and they'll point out any mistakes you have or you can do the same with them like why are you doing that that seems foolish blah 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 you know they may say hey your house is big why don't you just downsize it screw the memories you got to think about your financial independence go get a smaller house same part of town or a different town i don't know you have other people to bounce ideas off so again nobody cares more about your money then you do arm yourself with knowledge and uh, go forth and do great things. And let me know about your journey. I'm still on mine. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to get the new retirement software and start planning. There's so many paths for me to go down. Uh, my wife is a bit younger, so I have to plan that in the thing. That's probably why maybe for me, full retirement age on Social Security is best because she'll get more of a benefit when I, when I, when I, when, I'm, when she, uh, I disappear. So I don't know. Anyway, go forth to great things. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, definitely a huge topic, a huge problem to think about. All right. Take care. Happy New Year. I'm out.